So cool. So in terms of the agenda, how to find, so we're going to talk about how to find issues using 80-20 principle. Um, so that's the first part. Then we're going to talk quite extensively about the Google Display Network and the spam in it. It is, it's, it's quite shocking. Then I'm going to talk about keyword match types, the ads and the landing page combinations. And then we're going to go a little bit more advanced. We're going to talk about machine learning, um, a little bit of theory, what goes wrong and how you can use it. And then we're going to have some, some Q and A stuff. So the first thing is like, how do you move the needle in terms of these accounts and, and optimize them? So there's a, uh, the Pareto principle, and I've seen it a lot playing out in Google ads. I'll show you some examples now is 20% of your effort will actually make an 80% impact on the results. And it's about finding that 20% lever that you can optimize to have a huge uh, impact in the Google ads account. I've seen uh, people really dive into the keywords and the long tail keywords and all that. And, and I'm not saying it's not valuable, but there's usually a few campaigns or a few keywords that dominate the campaign spend and the, and the, and the target cost per lead or cost per sale. So a couple of examples here is the first way that, that, uh, that I used to just identify what can make the biggest impact in the, in the account is to follow the money is where is the money being spent in the account? So this is an account, uh, that spends, that spent uh, 58,000 rand over this uh, period. And what, what is quite clear is that 40% of the budget goes just into this campaign. And in 15% year and 14% year. So frankly, if you can focus your efforts just on these top three campaigns, that is going to impact 70% of the account. So this is a very good way to just focus effort on like what, what is actually moving the needle. And frankly, like this stuff can be, needs to be looked at, but it, you can also just ignore it because it's not really moving the needle in this instance. The second thing, so, so that's from a campaign level, it's just, just to go and follow the money. There is a nice view when you, when you, uh, so usually people navigate campaigns, well, well, what I do is campaigns, Google ads, and then uh, ad groups, and then go into the keywords. But if you just keep it on the account level, and you just literally on the left hand side, select keywords, it will lift, list all the keywords in the account for you. So this could be quite a big account for you uh, with an enormous amount of keywords. But what, what I've seen a lot is, is that a few keywords also dominate the space. So for example, this in this account, 20% of all the search uh, budget goes towards one keyword. And then there's two other keywords that also is eating up a lot of the budget. So in terms of optimizing this campaign and improving it, I would definitely like just focus all the attention on these top three keywords and make sure that they are well optimized. And optimization, I mean, I have a keyword in, in one account. Um, I have a specific ad for it. I have a specific landing page for it. And that'll move the needle. So if you can improve the the metrics on just these top three keywords, it'll make it'll move the needle in the account. Um, one of the one of the, the the things that I found very effective, especially if there's a target cost per acquisition, so cost per lead that a client wants, or you have to show a reduction in the cost per lead every month, is is literally just shaping and sculpting the budget. So this is an a, an account where all the accounts are limited by budget. So at the moment, uh, this client can, can assign more budget to it, but they don't have the funds and they don't have the capacity to expand it. So quite an easy way to bring the cost per lead down. So at the moment here, yeah, the cost per lead is on the most popular account campaign is about 93 Rand per lead. Um, and the other campaigns are like less. So it's like this is 10, 15% less you know, 17% less, et cetera. So an easy way to rebalance and get this cost per lead down here is to take the top one and just reduce the budget there and allocate it to the one that's actually got the best cost per lead. Um, so add, assign more budget here and assign a little bit more budget there. So within like half an hour's worth of work, you can reduce the cost per acquisition by probably 10 to 15%. 
So let's talk about the display network. This is a uh, personally, this is one of my my biggest bugbears that, that I have with the Google Display Network at the moment is um, is there's a whole economy that's been built around people clicking or accidentally clicking or being incentivized to click or engage with with uh, with creative on apps. So, for example, if you play a free game on your phone, and a lot of people do, um, there is a lot of incentivized uh, videos and, and and ads that's being shown that you have to view or watch or click. And there's a there's a whole um, there's a whole bunch of banner ads that are specifically designed to show on apps for kids. And then what happens is you have you know, like my nine-year-old daughter accidentally click, click, clicking on on an ad, and what happens is, when you look at look at this, it's quite difficult to see it and to spot it inside Google Ads, and you think you're getting incredible impressions and engagement, but actually it's all it's it's basically spam. So I'll give you an example. Um, so so this is an account that we looked at the Google Display Network, and um, and you have to click on like where your ads were shown in the interface. I'll, I'll, I'll give you an example now where to find it. But this list this lists where your display ads are being shown. So in this instance, there's this website called Aukan.mobi. And then you have mobile app. The Bula News is crap. I'm not sure about Glance. Mobile, this one is crap. Craft, oh, I don't know about that. That one is crap. That sounds crap. That sounds crap. That is also like a crap. App, uh, mobile app and what happens is it, it's just seven rand and two rand and five rand and twelve rand but it adds adds up and there's this impression that you have like you've shown your ad to 31,000 people but in actual fact no, nobody in your target audience has seen it and most of this is actually spam so I'll give you an example so this Ocon.mobi website is received 1,300 clicks and the website looks like this it's this weird like this is a South African based advertiser and this is this weird Korean based social media network thing and I think it's just basically milking impressions and clicks so you so the perception is that you know your ads are getting an incredible traction and the cost per CPM is so low but actually it is it's it is just spam basically I'll give you another example so we were in Spain last year and there's a website called Barcelona Airport. So there is a, an official Spanish Barcelona website, but it is in Spanish. So what do people search on Google? They search Barcelona Airport. And then what happens is there's this private website, not the Barcelona Airport officially, a private website that uh, comes up. And what happens is now you're on this website called Barcelona Airport. So now you want information about flights, terminals, hotels, car, high, et cetera. So it looks, it looks legit. So you then you click on terminal one, and what happens is this ad pops up between you navigating the website. And what happens is like you see this ad, and you go like, I don't really understand what's going on now. I'm supposed to be on a on an airline website, and there's two options. There's the option to close, and there's the clock option to open. This is really confusing. So if you click open, well, like what happens? Does it open the next page that I actually want to see? Or does it open the ad? Like, and in this instance, it opens the ad. So it opens up the landing page. So you're looking at your Google Display Network data and you're like, wow, you know, we are rock and rolling, we're getting clicks. But if you just scratch underneath the surface, it, it's, it's like it's all smoke and mirrors. And the problem is, is that the publishers win and Google wins. So they don't care about this. Google. Uh, have a fiduciary responsibility to the shareholders. So they are incentivized and they make money from this. So it's not really going to stop. So, so this is a big issue that we found with the Google Display Network. Um, in terms of fixing it, um, is there is a way to exclude all mobile apps. And at the moment, I think this mobile app issue is so pro prolific that we, we exclude all mobile apps at the moment because it is so incredibly bad. So the way to 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 exclude all mobile app uh, ads is you go to tools settings, you go to shared library, and you go to placement exclusion lists. What you then need to do, and this just gives you an idea of how 
difficult Google has made this to opt out of this is you then go and you go browse and you go into all the app categories and there is a hundred and forty times that you have to click and select all the categories to exclude all the apps 140 times you have to you can't select all you just go click 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 for like four minutes to click on all the different ones and then what you need to then you've built the list and then you need to apply to all the campaigns as well so it is google's made it incredibly odious to go and opt out of this mobile app spam ecosystem so that's one of the ways that you can you can avoid showing your ads there and then the other one is just is just sunshine is go to your google uh, display network campaign and then on the left hand side there's a tab called where ads showed so in the new interface it's on the insights but you click on where ads show and then you're going to see this list and it'll quickly give you an idea of like where you are spending your money on on the display network and uh, like you know please email me afterwards and tell me what you find so and then you can exclude um uh, those um those uh, websites so the third tip in terms of google display campaigns is what 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 we what what we think is a is is a is a is a way to exclude a lot of this crap is to to select your audience that you want to target so for example a remarketing list is an is an audience or maybe one of google's in market audiences select that plus specify where you want your ads to be shown so create a list of the websites that you want to show be shown at so this could be business day this could be times live this could be um the economist this could be you know a whole bunch of so for example TikTok is 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 coming ugh, not TikTok. um Twitter or X is also coming online, so you can specify X as a placement. Um, so I think the way that we approach it at the moment is choose the audience, but also specify the placement. Don't let Google decide the placement, because I think it was very good five years ago, but I think it is turning to a spam economy now. So, so be careful about that. Just in terms of placements as well, you can specify that you want to advertise on The Economist or New York Times, but uh, Google Ads usually is quite low on the ranking in terms of getting your banner on those premium websites. So you may need to either do a direct deal with them to get your banner on there or use a, um, a, a platform like uh, Google Display and Video 360 to actually buy media on the more premium placements. So just, just want to manage your expectations in terms of if you specify something on the placement network, you, you're not always going to get it. Okay. And then the fourth thing is is I think YouTube is still is still good. I think the the cost to advertise on YouTube is affordable. If you advertise on YouTube, the ad will be on YouTube, which is what you want. So, um, and you have some control over the channels where you want your ads to be shown, etc. So, I think if I had hundred rand, I would probably spend ten rand on remarketing. And then I would spend, if I have video assets, I would seriously consider advertising on YouTube because you have more control and the platform is YouTube. It's not some Korean social media site that's milking you for clicks. Right, uh, let's talk about keyword ads and landing pages. The combination of the keyword that somebody searches plus the ad they see plus the landing page offer equals success. So this is quite elementary. So when you search car insurance, and you see a car insurance ad and you see a car insurance landing page then you're like okay this is like what i was looking for the problem that's that's creeped up though is keywords it's become very com the keywords matching types have become really ambiguous and confusing frankly i'll give you a practical example so previously let's say I don't know, three years ago, exact match meant exact match. So when you, so for example, we advertise on these niche keywords, digital media advertising, agency, GDN ads, digital media agency. Now, so this is the best one that describes the objective of this campaign, digital media agency. So, you know, that's what we want. And then, so we specified it as exact match. And then what happened was Google is like, Oh, you know, oh, you know, I'm just going to try your ads 
and for others like close variants as well like digital agency digital agencies digital marketing agencies digital agency advertising digital, like there's a huge difference in the digital agency space between a digital media agency and a digital agency this 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 is for people that want creative work and banners and 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 branding and things and this is a very specific thing and what's happened is is that google serves keywords that are close variants to what you you wanted it to originally uh, display for so and this so this is a problem so coming back to this very simple thing where you go keyword plus landing page plus landing page offer is now more complicated than what it was because the keyword that you think it is like digital media agency is actually now digital media agency so you you're thinking that you're building a landing page for digital media agency but actually like the person comes from that keywords and this is quite problematic so i think looking at this the the search terms that your ads are actually being shown for is quite important and i think that broad match is let me show you some broad match stuff it is nuts like what's happening so if you're using broad match in your account so this is a client that used the keyword wallpapers so that's so this is like high-end printed wallpapers that you put up you know in a very high-end house like that's the wallpaper so they're building on the keyword wallpaper broad match and what happens is you're getting background you're getting wallpaper online you're getting colorful picture you're getting colorful like like that's not what they wanted but it's because it it's 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 um it's broad match that's just sort of that's that's how it's playing out so i think keywords be very careful about keywords and see which keywords are actually triggering which phrases are triggering the keywords i think that's very important because it goes back to this the keyword has to align with the ad and the landing page so so and then the second thing is google has forced us to use uh, data driven creative uh, so i think machine learning and this data driven um, technology is amazing but like i think i think people don't understand it um and it and there's some really negative side effects so for example we so this is this is all the creative uh, text combinations that could appear in an ad for one of our ads and and it forces me to create five or eight headlines and three you know two long headlines and what happens is is and you get penalized if there isn't enough variance in as well so what happens is the the some of the stuff that's really good like data driven media may not even get any impression so you're getting variation on the keyword but you're also getting variations on the ads so 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 be very be be aware that this stuff google changes this this stuff automatically and you need to keep your eyes on this so the only real thing that you can control is your landing page offer so what you put on your website and i'll give you an example of what, one that i found that was quite poor frankly is when you type in iphone cell phone contract into google telcom god bless their souls they got it right so you land on this page and it says apple iphone 13 so that's good so i went to the iStore and then i'm searching for an iphone cell phone contract and what do i see shopping for a new contract and i'm like where's my where's the iphone i don't understand so so there's a disconnect here in terms of, of the landing page so i think with google ads forcing us to use this data-driven creative plus these keywords that's um that's a problem the only thing that we can control is landing page offer so i think my tip for this is is make be aware of the what phrases the keywords are triggering plus obviously your ads you have less control there but definitely like make sure that your landing page um, is shown to the right keywords let's talk about about uh, ai and machine learning so these are the different campaign types that you can launch out of google ads um, at this moment and basically all of them run on some form of ai or machine learning so search all the creative is mostly ai now um, performance max is just black box ai display is uh, when it goes and finds the the, the, the publishers it's ai shopping is ai 
understanding how AI and machine learning works for these campaigns helps a lot to just understand what's going on. So just a few slides on that. So the firstly, this term machine learning, where does it fit? So AI is this big term, artificial intelligence, it's, it's like it's everybody uses this, this term and it feels to me that if there's four lines of code these days, it's also called AI. Uh, but and the discipline inside of AI, one of the disciplines inside AI is, is called machine learning. And the stuff that we are, the Google ad stuff is actually machine learning. So for the people that's a little bit more technical, it's actually regression analysis. But so let me let me just explain how it works. So if you look at house prices, um, so you can take the size of the house in square feet and the number of bedrooms. And what you can then do is you can predict what the price is. So basically what happens is you take A and then, and then you can predict B because if the house is small, it's got one bedroom, it's like it's a cheap house. If it's big and it's got four bedrooms, is the you know it's expensive. So there's a correlation between the size and the number of bedrooms with the price. Okay, so it's A. You get you get A, and that determines B, right? So that is uh, how regression works. In marketing, it is slightly different. So the inputs that's A is things like interest, it's things like age, which websites that you visit, which device that you come from. And then what happens is the combination of these is you have you then have B. So like what turned into a lead? And this is what, what's valuable for us is which one of these ver, uh, visitors actually converted and became a lead. So this one, no, no, yes, no. So this is B. So you use A to predict B. Right. So what is B? B is when somebody completes a lead form on your website or a sale or an inquiry or a PDF uh, download. So that is the B like this. That's this conversion. And how this whole machine learning thing works is, is you give um, Google, Google knows this information. So it knows the interest of the person, the age, website, device, etc. And what you need to give to Google to get this machine learning thing going is you need to give it B. So did it convert or not? No, no, yes, no. So this is this is basically how machine learning works is Google knows this, you give it that. And then what happens is you have this, you have a model. That's what they were, what they call a machine learning model. And maybe in the campaigns you've seen that, that if you change the bidding to CPA or CPL or ROAS, it says it's learning. And that is basically Google is busy building this model. Okay, so it takes a bit of time to, to learn this. Okay, so the next thing that Google, so once this model has been learned it's, uh, and created, there's a, so Google then can, is, uh, Google has, has these people that's browsing or searching for your keywords. So this guy's got interest in IT, this is the age website, device, TV, you know, he's interested in television, he's 35 years old. And based on the model that was built here, it will then give a probability that this person could turn into a lead. Okay. Because so for example, here, the fly fishing guy of the fishing guy is quite closely like associated with fly fishing. So it goes, okay, the probability is high that this person would actually convert. So it gives a, a percentage probability. And then what happens is you let Google decide who to show the ads for. So here, there's a 30% chance of the person uh, converting. So it's not going to show that 70% it shows the ad, 80% it shows the ad. Okay. So this is how machine learning works is it learns who is going to convert and not. So the whole trick to this whole thing is this machine learning is that you need to give it B. You need to give it this information. And if you give it, if you don't give it this information, you can't use machine learning. It's as simple as that. It doesn't know who is your, who, what is a lead and what is not a lead. What we've seen a lot is this statement is, so we've seen accounts where there's a lot of keywords in the account and there's a lot of ads and then and a lot of campaigns and everything is set to like CPL or CPA. And, and then 
And then we get the statement, Google's AI will optimize my campaigns. And I'm like, if Google doesn't know what B is, it can't optimize your campaigns. It's as simple as that. And if you make any mistake in B, this data, this conversion data, it looks like this, your account. So let's talk about how does this go AOI or what's the problem with this stuff is, the first thing is we've seen a lot of accounts don't have any conversion data. So what happened was we, we had Google Analytics, Universal Analytics, this is the previous one. Everybody has been forced into Google to use Google Analytics 4. And what's happened is they, a lot of people don't have any conversion data. So you, you're telling Google to go and build a machine learning model, but you're not giving it B. So this is a big issue. Um, and, and frankly, you can't run the campaign without the conversion data because a lot of the stuff just works on machine learning. So that's the first thing. So best practice is set up uh, your, your events and your conversions in Google Analytics and then push it through into Google Ads. And that is basically B. And when you set it as the primary, that means it's like it's B now. It's like, yes, run it on that. The other thing that we've seen is, is if you have insufficient conversion data. So for example, we receive, we don't uh, like, we don't receive a lot of leads from the website. So maybe, you know, if you receive four leads per month from the website, it just does not have enough data to build this model. You need, you need way more conversions to be able to build this, this thing. So your learning phase, that the campaigns go into will run for months because it is still trying to learn, but it doesn't have enough data to build that model. Okay. So it's very important that the B that you select, the conversion data that you select, you have to have at least 30 conversions per month. So now so some of you may say, oh, but we only receive five leads per month from the website. Cool. We have the same issue. So you need to find something else that is a signal for somebody that's interested to buy or to talk to you. So this could be a PDF download. This could be viewing of a key page. Um, so, so you need to choose another conversion point, a soft conversion point. Okay. And then the third, th third one is, is just basically like double counting. Like if you, if you using universal analytics, you know, some reason it's still running and you have and you have Google Analytics for conversion data coming into the thing as well. You have um, you have page views also as a conversion. You just have multiple, multiple confusing pieces of B that you give to Google Ads. It also like confuses the engine. Um, and then it's optimizing, you know, for the wrong stuff. OK, so let's talk about how to fix it. So the first thing is I would definitely recommend to go and learn the basics of machine learning. There's this brilliant course by, by Andrew, I don't know how to pronounce his surname, deeplearning.ai. It is brilliant. It is, it talks about AI and what can it do and what can't it do. It's six hours. It's free through Coursera. Um, we'll include it in the, in the email uh, that we sent out or just go and Google it. What is AI? Um, it is very, very, very good. Okay. So uh, it'll give you an understanding of like how this stuff works in a very digestible format. Um, the second thing is make sure your data is clean. So your Google Analytics for everybody has basically, well, 90% of advertisers have just ignored Google Analytics 4 and, and they haven't set it up properly. It's just running. Okay. It's like, you know, cool, we get it, we understand. Nobody wants to, uh, we, nobody has budget to invest in it. But if you want to use machine learning and actually use Google Ads effectively and you run complicated campaigns, your Google Analytics force data needs to be clean. It needs to uh, pick up the right conversions. It needs to send that to Google Ads, okay? Um, and then when you run this, when you do use machine learning, be careful, like apply it carefully to Google. So for example, the, one of the, the, when you do a bidding change and you're using manual CPC, wonderful. That's, that's, you know, I think CPC is where everything started. Go and change this and take one of the campaigns. If you have 30 conversions a month 
and see change it to maximize conversions and see if you can sort of start up getting better performance using machine learning. But if you go and just change all the campaigns to machine learning, it is going to go, and your data is incorrect, it is going to look like a cry nest when you go fishing. Thanks, everyone. Have a good day. Bye.